A hearty good afternoon to everyone and welcome to a session on skin care during pregnancy. Now, we are glad to have Dr. Safiya Tanim among us today to help us understand this topic. Now, while pregnant, your body understands and it goes through a lot of changes. Uh, one of which is the change in your skin. Changes in your skin might include a sudden glow to your cheeks or pinkish reddish lines in your stomach. Now, along with other changes, uh, the doctor will help us understand these and she will help us understand this entire uh, skincare procedure uh, during uh, pregnancy itself. So don't hesitate to ask the doctor uh, of any questions just in case. Doctor, you have the stage. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Safiya Taneem. I'm the consultant dermatologist and cosmetologist practicing at Apollo Cradle, Kormangla, Bangalore. Uh, and I'm extremely glad to reach out to you today through this incentive taken by the Apollo Cradle Group of Hospitals. And so I'm here today to talk on a few common skin changes that are experienced um, during the course of pregnancy. And I would also like to enlighten you on um, a few um, routine skincare regimens that can be followed during pregnancy in order to deal with these not so desirable changes. Um, can I just have the screen shared? Okay. All right, so um, before we proceed, I would first like to brief you a little bit on the basic anatomy and uh, functions of the skin. Skin is the outermost covering of the body. It is the largest organ constituting for about 12 to 15% of the total body weight. And it covers an area of about 1.5 to 2 meters squared. So on a microscopic cross section, uh, the skin is composed, uh, it, is found, it is found to be composed of three layers. Uh, there is this upper epidermis, the second dermal layer and the hypodermis or the fat layer. Epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin and it functions to protect the body from the harsh external environment. Uh, it lodges a pigment called uh, melanin, which protects the body from the harmful effects of the UV rays. Um, so on exposure to the sun and the UV rays, there is a compensatory rise in this pigment called melanin, and um, which in turn results in pigmentation or darkening of the skin. This is followed by the second layer or the dermis, which um, you know lodges a lot of structures like blood vessels that take, plus, uh, that take part in the nutrition of the skin. Um, there are nerves which um, are responsible for the sensations of touch, pressure, pain. Um, then we have the sweat glands which uh, participate in the temperature regulation of the body. Then we have the oil producing glands uh, or the sebaceous glands that are responsible for lubrication of the skin. We also have something called uh, collagen and elastic fibers, uh, which are um, you know, which adapt the skin to the mechanical stretching that happens during the course of pregnancy. Pregnancy, like we all know, is a physiological condition characterized by a wide variety of changes occurring to all systems of the body. And these changes also involve the skin, hair, and the nails. The skin changes that we see during pregnancy can be broadly tabulated under the following three headaches. So we have the physiological skin changes that are commonly expected to occur during the course of um, any pregnancy. Then we have skin disorders which are worsened by the pregnant state per se. And then we have the skin disorders which are specifically seen only during the pregnancy and which we wouldn't see it otherwise. So most of these changes are attributed to the hormonal fluctuations that are happening within the body during the pregnancy. These changes are constantly going through and uh, especially there is this hormone called progesterone which rises by many folds during pregnancy to support the uh, continuation of the pregnancy. But when it comes to skin, it proves to be highly notorious and it ends up causing concerns like acne, uh, pigmentation, it can cause rashes and allergic reactions in certain uh, susceptible individuals. So now let's have a look at the common, uh, commonly occurring physiological or the normal changes that we do see during the course of pregnancy. So there can be localized darkening of the skin over the regions like breasts, uh, genitalia, abdomen, face, and in certain individuals, we also find generalized darkening of the skin over the entire body. Um, the pre-existing molds become more darker and prominent. 
So this is a picture showing a condition called Linea Nigra, where we see a pigmented line over the abdomen. It usually appears during the second trimester, and it tends to resolve spontaneously a few months post the delivery without, any, without the need for any treatment. Melasma, also known as the mask of pregnancy, is again a very commonly occurring pigmentary disorder. Uh, it is uh, characterized by uh, brown to black patches over the face, and uh, it can be aggravated by sun exposure and exposure to the heat. So it becomes important to sun protect your skin during the pregnancy. And uh, however, this condition does resolve in majority of the cases post delivery without any treatment, but in certain individuals, it does continue to last. So this is another pigmentary disorder, what we call it as an acanthosis nigricans. Uh, it is seen as uh, thickened velvety patches of skin around the neck, uh, over the underarm regions. It is also seen on the folds of the body. Um, it is aggravated by the weight gain during the pregnancy. It can also be associated with an underlying diabetes or a pre-diabetes. Uh, can, it can also have an underlying thyroid disorders to be, you know, worsening the problem. So this, in this uh, picture, we are seeing redness on the palms of the redness on the palms, and uh, this is usually um, it usually happens due to uh, changes that are occurring to your blood vessels, accompanied by increased blood volume during the pregnancy. And again, this is a reversible change. So this is a picture showing varicose or the dilated veins, and this occurs as a result of excessive weight gain during the pregnancy. So a stretch mark, so the strigravidarum, this is the most inevitable part of any pregnancy. Uh, overstretching of the abdominal skin leads to break in the elastic fibers, which in turn results in these stretch marks, uh, which, however, remain as permanent scars even, even post-delivery. Now, coming to the hair, um, there is an almost uh, complete arrest of hair fall that is seen during pregnancy, and this can be attributed to the uh, positive uh, beneficial effects of progesterone on the hair roots. It causes thickening of an increase and an increase in the density of the hair. Uh, however, it does cause a little um, increase in the facial hair growth as well. So in this picture, we see um, growth of hair over the face, a condition what we call it as a hypertrichosis. And on the nails, we find brittleness, we find ridges and grooves. These are a few nail changes that we do see during pregnancy. Now, let's move on to those conditions which, which get worsened um, due to their pregnant state per se. So pregnancy invites for a lot of uh, wide variety of infections. Um, this is because the immunity or the defense mechanism of the body is suppressed during, in, during the pregnancy. The reason why it is suppressed is um, basically immunity is the defense mechanism of the body. Uh, it, uh, uh, it, is, it is a system which is designed to identify, destroy and eliminate the culprit pathogenic organisms that are entering the system. Um, so in pregnancy, this mechanism is switched off so that the body doesn't attack the growing baby, considering it to be or mistaking it to be an a foreign organism. So because of this, what happens is all these pathogens like bacteria, fungus, virus, they take advantage of the situation. They start growing on the body. And uh, now let me take you through a few common infections that we do get to see during the course of pregnancy. So these are the common fungal infections, candidial vaginitis, where, which is associated with a lot of itching and uh, an increase in the white discharge per vagina. Um, the other condition that we see here is a ringworm or the tinea group of infections where we see itchy red ring-like rashes uh, all over the body. And amongst the viral infections, the most commonly encounter, encountered ones are the, you know, the varicella or the chickenpox, uh, which presents with fever and bustful blisters over the trunk, over the abdomen face. Um, then we also see uh, this viral warts. Uh, which present as uh, multiple, uh, painless, asymptomatic, 
um, growths which are usually seen on the palms and the feet. Um, then uh, another condition that we see here is a uh, herpes labialis, where we see uh, multiple water-filled blisters uh, present over the lips, around the mouth, associated with mild itching or a burning sensation. All of these conditions are highly contagious and they spread from one person to another. So acne is another concern which gets aggravated during pregnancy and worsening of the acne is due to an increase in the oil production of the skin under the influence of the hormone progesterone again. So if it is not treated appropriately at the right time, it can end up in, in scarring, which can be uh, long lasting and they can be quite devastating. And uh, in, these, in these pictures, you see different types of uh, post acne scars over the face. Now, finally, moving on to those dermatoses which we see only during pregnancy. So there is this condition called PUP, which um, presents with uh, multiple uh, itchy red rashes, um, particularly over the abdomen uh, and more particularly over the stretch marks. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it is also seen involving the limbs and other parts of the body. It usually appears in the first pregnancy and it rarely recurs in the subsequent, subsequent ones. Um, it usually resolves spontaneously in a few months post the delivery and this condition usually doesn't pose any health risks to the fetus or to the mother. Then we have this condition called intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. So um, this condition presents with intensive uncontrollable itching. Itching is so severe that it causes disruption of sleep and insomnia in the affected indi individuals. Um, it may be associated with jaundice in certain occasions. And uh, this condition is something not to be ignored. Uh, it can pose potential um, health, um, you know, benef uh, health risks, uh, in fact, uh, risk to life of the fetus. So it is very important that we recognize this and treat this at the earliest. So in this condition, we normally don't see any rashes. All that we see is intensive itching. And uh, the picture is just showing a few scratch marks that have resulted from the uh, scratching caused by you know, the intensive itching. So now, finally, I would want to conclude the session by um, giving you a few insights on safe and effective skin care to be followed during pregnancy. So maintenance of personal hygiene. Uh, this is the most important measure that has to be um, uh, followed uh, in order to prevent the you know, um, possible infections during pregnancy. Retention of moisture on the skin, excessive sweating, tight and occlusive clothing are the most important factors that end up uh, worsening the fungal and the bacterial infections. Therefore, uh, kindly make sure to you know keep your skin uh, clean and dry especially in the uh, intimate areas avoid wearing damp clothing make sure that they are dried well out in the sun uh, and ironed uh, preferably on the inner side because if at all there are any organisms left behind you know they get killed that way um, avoid wearing uh, uh, clothing which is like really tight and inclusive going for something a little loose and comfortable um, wash your face twice a day with a soap-free, mild moisturizing cleanser, ideally matching the pH of the skin, which is about uh, 5.5. 5. Um, avoid scrubs as they can increase the pigmentation of the skin. Um, moisturize the skin and uh, sun protect it with a broad spectrum sunscreen, even if at all you're indoors. So by using the sunscreen, we are actually minimizing the um, pigmentation and the darkening of the skin. So uh, be very, very careful about choosing the cosmetics and over-the-counter medicines because uh, these may contain certain harmful ingredients which if used during pregnancy can cause some serious uh, birth defects in the baby. For example, there is this molecule called retinoid which is usually present in anti-acne and the anti-aging creams. So um, this uh, molecule is known to cause some serious birth defects and malformations in the growing fetus. So uh, do tend to avoid any anti-aging creams uh, during the course of pregnancy. Only anti-aging ingredient that is uh, permitted is uh, vitamin C based serums. Um, now conditions like acne, however, they have to be treated with specific uh, topical medications and oral antibiotics, um, for which I would uh, definitely advise you to seek uh, medical help. 
in order to decide what would suit you the best. Um, and uh, coming to uh, this dry skin conditions like eczemas and um, you know the other dry skin conditions, uh, they again we indicate a use of a specific moisturizer. So again, I would definitely advise you to um, you know seek a medical help in case of these conditions. So abdominal support uh, with specific inner wares and um, exercising to strengthen the abdominal muscles normally tends to minimize the appearance of the stretch marks. However, it cannot be avoided altogether, but, how, but we can definitely reduce the appearance to an extent. Um, and last but not the least, uh, uh, make sure that you get adequate amount of sleep, exercise. Um, do, uh, make sure, uh, do, do remember to you know, drink a lot of fluids. Uh, just applying a moisturizer on the surface would not be enough. So you also need to hydrate your skin from within. You can also include moderate amounts of ghee in your diet because that works as a very good oral moisturizer, especially for people with uh, dry skin. They can always consider, uh, you know, adding moderate amounts of uh, ghee to their diet. Um, also, um, you know, you can uh, avoid overeating, avoid um, binging on uh, junk, oily uh, and sweet food, eat healthy, include a lot of fruits and vegetables in your diet, uh, particularly fruits like pomegranates, strawberries, watermelons, they uh, contain a good amount of skin lighteners in them like elagic acid and glutathione, which work wonders on um, you know, uh, the pigmented skin. So I will uh, definitely would advise you to you know, restrict to a healthy diet during the course. Um, and since all of these conditions can be physically, cosmetically, and psychologically debilitating, uh, it becomes very important to diagnose and treat them at the earliest with a wide range of treatment options, which we do have it available with us. Uh, so therefore, I would um, request you to do reach out to us to know more about what's happening with your skin, how we can tackle a few conditions bothering you, and also for some specific advice on um, skin care, specially designed for you uh, in order to maintain a healthy, vibrant skin that you all deserve. Thank you so much for your patient listening.